Hello, Maniac Jay here, and we're back again with another LEGO set review. Yes, the uh, Captain America vs. Hydra Avengers Assemble set, which I think actually came out sometime last year. Yeah, that sounds about right, since we're mostly focusing on the DC sets right now uh, for Age of Ultron later on. Um... To be perfectly honest, I'm not very taken in with Marvel's offerings this year. We didn't get any um, Thor The Dark World sets last year, or two years ago now. Good lord, I can't believe it's 2015 already. Um, and we certainly didn't get any Captain America The Winter Soldier sets, though the Guardians of the Galaxy sets were very welcome and very enjoyable, and I had a lot of fun with them. Um... But we did get a couple of other sets. You know, we got an X-Men set. We got a couple of Spidey sets. And we got this little one. Which is interesting for a few reasons. Um, the biggest thing that's interesting to me is uh, that it has Hydra in it. So I can't help but feel that even though we didn't get any, say... Age of the Age of Age of Captain America. No, that's not it. Any Winter Soldier or Agents of Shields sets? Um, that they're kind of tapping into the whole uh, Hydra being revealed as one of the big baddies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe setting. And that's a plane going by, and it's quite loud because I forgot to close my window. Isn't that lovely, kids? Um, so yeah. Um, somewhat inspired by Captain America, the first Avenger, the movie that came out in 2011, with a couple of elements of some of the newer sets that I'll get into in a little bit, or rather the newer comics and stuff like that. Uh, but let's see what it is. Uh, basically, it's, uh, it comes with Captain America, the Red Skull, and a Hydra Henchman. Ooh, nice alliteration there. And while the set is officially called Captain America vs. Hydra, I'm probably just going to call it the Hydra Tank, because that's what it is. Um, seems to be inspired by the Hydra Tank, or Hydra Armored Personnel Carrier, as it more proper properly should be called, from Captain America the Winter Soldier, albeit not in the kind of black gunmetal gray that Hydra seemed to prefer in that movie. This one is definitely more inspired by the comic books. Which, again, I will get to in a little bit. Let's see what we've got on the back. We have a list of the lovely features. Uh, apparently, when uh, Captain America punches the Red Skull, he will make a pow sound. That's very impressive uh, that they managed to fit a speaker into Captain America. Um, the uh, tires move individually, like they actually have individual mounting uh, points, which is kind of cool. Uh, of course, the turret turns, and of course the missiles fire, and then we see the Red Skull leaping from the tank holding the Tesseract, or the Cosmic Cube, or whatever we're going to call it, uh, and attacking Captain America. Anyway, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much uh, it for the box. Don't see anything important, though I will comment on how the... Uh, Marvel figures on the back are clearly more inspired by the comic books than they are by the movie, even though they are showing the uh, big four from the Avengers that were introduced in the Avengers movie, which incidentally is still pissing me off because um, Hawkeye and Black Widow, normal mundane humans that they may be, are still a member of that team. They're still members of that team. Thank you, Marvel, for, you know ignoring the contributions of the only female member of your team. Not that that annoys me too much. Anyway, let's open this box. In fact, let me open this box after finding a knife, because uh, I can't get into this blasted thing very easily. Oh, it's so professional, this, that I can't even set aside, like, a pair of scissors or a knife or something like that. I have to go digging on my desk. Yeah. All right, let's see what's in the box. Legos! And the box can go over there. Let's see. Oh, God damn it, stickers. Uh, comic book thing. Ooh, cute. Hmm. Let's see, is there anything interesting in this? That would be... No, apparently. Apparently there is... Nothing interesting going on here, though it does indicate that apparently uh, this set and the uh, Hulk 
laboratory smash set, the one that has the Falcon and Modoc in it, are actually in the same continuity. So that's, uh, it's kind of cool, I guess. That doesn't really interest me all that much. Um... Yeah, picture of a bunch of the heroes. It's really weird seeing the combination of the comic book inspired characters and the movie inspired characters, which um, was actually kind of a complaint of Lego Marvel superheroes, though not a very big complaint, that, well, all of the characters just kind of... Sometimes you just didn't, the characters just didn't match up very well, which is, you know, understandable because obviously they don't have Marvel Cinematic Universe inspired versions of the X-Men. Can't imagine why not. Um, but anyway, not important. Yep, two bags. They're labeled. I see parts of Captain America in this one, and man, there's like twice as many parts in this bag as in this one. Anyway, I'm going to go build this, and then we will review it properly. See you soon. And we're back. Um, hmm. <laughs> um, not quite sure why I started it when I didn't really have anything immediately on mind to say, but that kind of honestly speaks about the whole set. Well, um, I'm just gonna get this out of the way. It's not a bad set. It's not, like, a terrible set by any means, and if you're really wanting a uh, Red Skull piece, then, you know, obviously you have to get this set. But it's not wowing me as much as the last set I reviewed was doing. And, man, this set has me confused, actually. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. Uh, yeah, this set isn't wowing me as much as the Green Lantern vs. Sinestro set that I reviewed last time. Uh, which, to be fair to this set, that's kind of not fair to it, as odd as that sounds, because that last set, I don't know, it just seemed to strike everything perfectly for me, and this one just kind of, well, doesn't, but it's not a bad set. I, I mean it. I really do mean this isn't a bad set. It's just not, like, a great set. It, it's a good set. Um, let's just look at things. Uh, so yeah, it comes with a little, um, Hydra APC sort of thing with a complete with a Hydra henchman and the Red Skull, and then you've got Captain America on his motorcycle. So um, let's look at the uh, the Captain first. Uh, how'd that old poem go? Uh, Whenever he throws his mighty shield, any enemy he faces must yield, or something like that. So yeah, uh, Captain America. Mm. Let's pull him off and show him off. Um, Captain America in a much more um, comic book inspired outfit, um, matching the uh, recent heroic age, I believe, uh, where they kind of finally did away with Captain America's um, sort of skin tight outfit and replaced it with more of a body armor look. And I know that's kind of unpopular with a number of fans of Captain America, myself somewhat included, but to be perfectly honest, I've never been a fan of um, the skin-tight spandex look in superheroes. There's very few heroes, I feel, who can pull it off, and I'm really enjoying the inclination in recent years to give superheroes much more realistic costumes, Captain America included. I, I really like his comic book suit a lot. Um, to be perfectly honest, I like it to the point that I wish they'd adapted that for Age of Ultron instead of the outfit that we've seen in pictures and stuff like that. Not that the Age of Ultron outfit is bad, it's just that I preferred his uh, comic book outfit to that. But anyway, uh, you can kind of tell that it's uh, comic book inspired because it's a bit brighter blue, but that it's also the more recent era because you can kind of see the body armor on either side. And um, it, uses a it uses a brighter red, the more Lego standard red for the shield. And that's not necessarily a good thing because um, the darker blue on the shield doesn't work as well. And the red seems to... That was my phone going off. Uh, hold on a second. Jump cut. Jump cut? Jump cut. <laughs> Jump cut. I uh, forgot to mute my phone. Anyway, as I was saying, um, the uh, the red seems to leak through the white a little bit, and that's kind of bugging me. And actually, hold on a sec. Right off to the side of me, I uh, realized this was going to come up eventually, so I planned ahead, and I grabbed... 
the Avengers Captain America figure to uh, show off some of the differences, because I figured that that has to happen at some point. So the biggest obvious difference is that the new Captain America, uh, in my right hand here, is cast in uh, much brighter blue than the... Uh, the Avengers one, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, it's closer to the comic book, and uh, some people weren't a fan of the... And actually, to be perfectly honest, it's more accurate to the movie's coloration. This dark blue is um, very close to the color of blue that they used for his um, strike suit in Captain America the Winter Soldier, and I know that a lot of fans didn't like that strike suit, but I absolutely loved that suit to death. That's probably my favorite Captain America outfit in the history of ever. Seriously, it is absolutely amazing. I mean, the first time I saw that in pictures, I was like, oh my god, that's pure sex, to be perfectly honest. Uh, yeah, a little too, uh, sorry, a little TMI. Um, but um, in the movie, his blue was a lot brighter than the dark navy blue that you can ac actually, in this lighting, barely see any of the details unless I hold it kind of like that. Nope, that doesn't work. It's too shiny. But, um, so, yeah, biggest difference, darker blue, lighter blue, and also the darker red and the lighter red. Um, uh... I'm not saying that, like, one of these is better than the other. This is obviously more comic booky, and this is more movie-ish. Um, oh, and a uh, little back printing, and Cap actually in this version has uh, a star on his back as well. And notably, uh, the it, it's not, it is not symmetrical. He does have, like, uh, chest muscles printed on this side and, like, back printed on this side. So it's not like it's a symmetrical body that you can swap around or anything like that. Not sure why anyone would want to do that, but people are weird sometimes. But, um, yeah, um, I'm not saying that one is better or worse than the other. I kind of prefer the darker one myself. Um, this one's smiling, though, so, you know, he's a bit more friendly, I guess. Uh, and looking at the shields, um, I think the white looks a bit better on the uh, older one than it does on this one. But uh, that might just be me. Oh, and I also want to compare their motorcycles. I did actually dig out my... Uh, Captain America motorcycle from his little mini set, which I'm going to be perfectly honest, I wasn't a fan of. I, th I felt that it was too big for Captain America and that he didn't have a motorcycle in the movie anyway. So I actually managed to find in my collection a motorcycle exactly like this, and that's what I've been using for my little uh, Captain America since. So I'm glad to see that they use the smaller motorcycle, and it has a little place on the back where he can store the mighty shield. Am I holding it right? Nope. I cannot mount that so that it looks um, perfectly flat on the back. So there it is. Not too bad. Um, I'm going to be kind of honest here. I wish that they'd done either a little printing or given us a sticker to put, like, right there. I think I, I think that in this case, a little Captain America circle might have looked good. But then again, I just remembered how fiddly it was to put these little guys on. So probably a good thing they left that off. Doesn't look too bad, though... Having said that, it is a little bit weird to see that this version of Cap has the bright red, but his motorcycle is in the darker red from this guy. Um, not sure how this would have looked in a bright red. I don't have a bright red motorcycle piece of my own to use. Um, so it's just something to go there. And uh, put him off to the side, right there, I think. And then let's look at the Hydra APC. Um, it's kind of... It's, you know, quite clearly inspired by the first adventure, though, to be perfectly honest, I don't... No, man, I use that phrase a lot. I need to work on that. Um, I'm not really sure what era this is supposed to be. I mean, it is its own Avengers Assemble thing where they've got, like, MODOK and the Falcon in his comic book suit, so it is kind of comic booky, and that seems to be kind of modernistic, so we could say that this is a very modern vehicle. I'm going to choose to pretend with a little bit of work that it'll look like, um, something from the first Avenger, even though it clearly isn't. So, uh, it's a nifty little, um, open-air tank, which kind of leads me into my first issue with it, is that it is a tank-slash-armored vehicle, and it's open air. There is no protection for either the leader of your organization or the guy who is sitting in a big mobile turret on top. Him not being protected kind of makes sense for the Red Skull. The Red Skull himself not having some sort of a thing that can close over it makes no sense to me. Uh, the Red Skull seemed to not really be that stupid, especially in the movie with how well he planned things out and how it took 
you know, the existence of some of the most intelligent people in the world to start giving him a headache. But, um, let's look at the minifigures themselves. Um... So I'm going to look at, oddly enough, I'm going to look at the Hydra guy first, not the not um, the Red Skull. So the Hydra Man is obviously not based on the movie version. In the movie, they dressed in um, black leather with kind of gunmetal gray slash silver looks, a sealed helmet so you never saw their face, which to me, that was kind of a an abandoned thing. I kind of wish there'd been a subplot in Captain America the Winter Soldier where we'd seen... Um, the, the Red Skull brainwashing captured uh, prisoners of war into being his loyal soldiers. And there is somewhat of an... There is somewhat of a hint that that is what's going on, considering that they were experimenting on and torturing Bucky for uh, spoilery reasons. Uh, so there's somewhat of a hint that, given the fanatic loyalty of the Hydra soldiers to the Red Skull, that he is actually brainwashing them into being loyal to him. And I think there would have, it would have been fantastic to have seen that, actually, in the movie as a scene where, like, it's revealed that the soldiers that Cap has been fighting this whole time are just, like, say, captured Americans or French or British or even captured, you know, former Nazi soldiers to really give the Red Skull that extra air of menace that this is, he is such a big threat that, um, you know, and to also kind of emphasize that he's trying to take over the world and make it fit his own image, that he is able, he's starting at that level of remaking individual soldiers in his own image. Uh, I think it would have made him much creepier and also would have still fit the mood of the, uh, 1940s propaganda piece they were going for. But, um... That was a bit of a sidetrack for me. Um, but going back to this guy, uh, he is in the traditional Hydra green and yellow, which is just another reminder that I don't really like comic book costume design sometimes. But, you know, for the Avengers Assembled thing, it works. And they've got the Hydra H in their um, brackets, which, credit to Captain America the First Avenger, the Hydra soldiers actually do have the Hydra H worked into their costume design in a very subtle way. Uh, the uh, hardware braces that they wear. Uh, he also has a little Hydra H on his belt buckle, and if I remember correctly, ah oh yes, he's got a little Hydra H on the back of his head. He's got lots of little equipment pouches in printing, no printing on the arms or legs, and I um, kind of wish that they hadn't used the standard Lego yellow hands and had instead given him like bright green, bright green, bright green gloves. But uh, he's not bad. Um, my only real complaint for this guy is he does not come with a weapon at all. In fact, none of these characters come with weapons, and I'll explain when I get to the Red Skull why I gave him what I gave him. Um, Seriously, they could have given him, like, one of the stud launchers, and it would have been, like, a Tesseract-powered ray gun or something like that. That would have been really cool! And it's like, so what if his job is to sit up here in the turret? He could have had a gun, and they could have, like, given it a little place for him to sit, and he could have held onto it and, you know, fought, actually, like, fired it. Ah, oh, damn it, bumped the camera. I'm stupid! You know, he could have fired it at Captain America, and then you could have used the shield to block it, and then it'd be all cool, and Captain America is, like, big hero saving the day. Yeah! But, uh, they don't do that, and that's kind of bugging me, and in fact, if I do anything with this figure later on, I'm probably going to dig out a spare stud launcher and give it to him so that he doesn't look as, uh, disappointing as it were. And I knocked the motorcycle over. Um, and I knocked Cap over. No! But, uh, yeah, I, I, it's kind of understandable since his job is just to sit in the damn turret, but, um... Yeah, so, uh, Red Skull. Red Skull is fantastic, to be perfectly honest. Um, really, even though he's kind of more comic book inspired, he still looks close enough to the movie that you could pretend that he is actually Hugo Weaving. And in fact, the way that his head is printed and... Focus? Focus? You're not gonna focus. Okay, well, screw you too, camera. The way that his head is printed, I'm actually getting a very Hugo Weaving... Um, feeling from it, to be perfectly honest. So, um, he's really not bad, and, uh, again, looks close enough to the movie that you could pretend that he's, um, from the movie. Uh, Nick Fury, uh, from the, um, I can't remember what set it is, the one where it has, like, Spider-Man and the flying shield car. Nick Fury looks decent enough that you can still use him 
for um, a minifigure display or something like that as a movie, this guy actually does look good enough. And he comes with a transparent one-by-one -one block for a Tesseract. They've done this piece uh, before in the... Um, I don't remember what the set was called. It was honestly the only... Um, it was the only set that I did not get from the original Avengers lineup. It was the Shield um, 4x4 with uh, Iron Man, Mark VI, and Loki and Hawkeye. Uh, that one came with this piece for the Tesseract as well. Uh, as far as I know, those are the only two sets that have had the Tesseract in some way or another. Um, and I have something special planned for that later on. And um, those of you who had a keen eye might have noticed earlier that when I pulled him out, he was holding this little gun, uh, which I made from a, um, a handle piece and a couple of spare parts that actually came with the set. Uh, I did this because in the Red Skull's case, it really feels weird that he does not have a gun of some sort either. Uh, seriously, you could have given him, like, a little machine pistol, or you could have even given him one of the stud launchers with, like, a little light blue stud so that he has his own little Tesseract blaster, and that would have really worked for the Red Skull, again, especially with what I talked about earlier with the Hydra guy being able to shoot at, uh, Cap, it would have been really cool. Really? I, that's, like, the third, the third thing I've dropped today. Um, oh, shoot, lost the Tesseract. Down the Tesseract! Mm. Man, it is painfully obvious that I don't script these in any way, shape, or form. But yeah, it would have been really cool if um, the Red Skull had had a, uh, a stud launcher uh, so that he could fire at Captain America. That would have been really cool. I think would have been a fun play feature, actually. I'm not even really a fan of the stud launchers. Uh, and then he just sits in the vehicle. So let's get to the, uh, Hydra tank, which I've kind of talked about a little bit. Um, it's not a bad vehicle. It's actually pretty well built, and it's got a couple of nice designs and play features. A little turret turns around. It's got these little, uh, the wheels are actually very clever. Um, let me, I'll pop one off. Um, it's basically two of these wheels mounted on a, uh, five-length Technic piece, and then the way it's mounted means that it all moves independently. And this is actually somewhat therapeutic. It reminds me of like one of those massage um, massage things that I don't remember the proper name for. Uh, and it's supposed to be so that this thing can like roll over different things. And let's actually test that. Let's see. That actually looks pretty cool. As a play feature, it's kind of cool. Uh, not really necessary for how for, like, if you're going to, say, display this piece. But as a play feature, it's really cool. And I, I think it would actually look kind of nifty if you were, like, rolling it across a bed or a carpet or something like that and had a bunch of, like, Lego bricks scattered around. Um, uh, as for the rest of the vehicle, um, I like the green. Um, not a big fan of the uh, yellow stripes, but they do pretty well. And the stickers actually... Um, pretty minimalistic, and they do pretty, they do very well. Uh, it's the, uh, the two numbers on either side of the tank, and the, uh, Hydra logo here, and then the Hydra logo here, uh, works very well. It matches the color almost perfectly, uh, perfectly, actually, to the point where, unless the light strikes it right, you can't really tell that it's a sticker. And it's kind of cool to have, like, this stripe effect going through. Um, one kind of problem with it is that, the Hydra tank's in this color, and the Hydra guy is in a different color. The guy who's, like, turning the tank and firing the missiles is not in the same color scheme as the rest of the tank. That bugs me just a little bit. I mean, that, it, I wouldn't say it, like, offends my design sensibilities, but that does bugs me a little bit that we don't have um, either this guy in kind of a light, in kind of a more subdued shade of green, or this in bright green and yellow, though, honestly, I think the whole vehicle would look really ugly in bright green and yellow, but then again, it might have worked as kind of a comic booky vehicle. Um, again, kind of reminded of the movies, and, of, and uh, you know, flick fire missiles abound. Uh, I'm going to be perfectly honest, while this... I really need to stop using that phrase, but it's just the way I work. Um, anyway... This isn't a bad vehicle by any means, but it is somewhat of a disappointing vehicle. I mean, it uses the old style of flick fire missiles as opposed to a newer stud launcher or one of the uh, cool 
um, one by four spring loaded launchers for it. Uh, it doesn't really feel like it belongs to anything. And it feels a little bit comic booky and fictional with the open cockpit design. This would have been kind of like, it would have been kind of cool for at least the front part to have a hatch or something to help hide the red skull. Um, yeah, honestly, that's kind of my biggest complaint about it is this is just the, it just doesn't feel quite as good as it could have been. Then again, this was kind of obviously a budget set. I mean, it's $20, and for $20, it isn't a bad set at all. You get two vehicles, you get two villains, and you get a hero, which is great. Uh, you finally get the Red Skull, of course, and uh, for those of you who missed out on the Tesseract or somehow don't have any transparent one-by-one -one bricks, hint me, uh, this is a good chance to get a Tesseract um, for use in your... Uh, in any, like, displays or stuff that you're doing, like, say, if you want Loki to hold the, to, you know, have his hand on the Tesseract or something like that. Uh, anything else I can think of with this thing? Um, not particularly. It is a simple build. It didn't take me long to do, but it's, um, well-built enough and well-designed. I, um, uh, actually, now that I think about it, I kind of wish that this little area here was filled in, because then you could kind of pretend it was the engine block as opposed to, like, being able to look directly through the um the design but whatever um there's a couple of things about it actually that ve feel very uh, military if that makes sense uh the fact that the headlights are covered with like metal grills um the little exhaust pipes i'm actually just realized what these are these are um handles i think to help the uh soldiers get on which is kind of weird. Now I wish that they had handles on that side. I might have to do that later on, because then, like, it'd be easier for them to get on board. Because um, I don't think that everyone has the Red Skull's super strength and he could just jump into the cockpit. Um, it's, you know, again, not a bad build. Um, not as... Let me think if I can give my final thoughts. Uh, <laughs> final thoughts. This is certainly a rambling enough video. I'm going to have to work on, like, getting shorter reviews and thinking out my thoughts better. Um, this is not as big of a must-buy recommendation. This doesn't get a must-buy recommendation from me like Green Lantern vs. Sinestro did, but it does get a stamp of approval from me. For $20, this is a pretty good set, and it doesn't look as disappointing to me as, say, the uh, the one with MODOK and Falcon. And if I ever pick up that set, I'll talk about that one at more length. There's a couple of complaints I have with that set from what I've seen of it. Um... But as a fun set for your kid, for a kid or for an adult collector, uh, this is, you know, it's a fun set. Again, not a must-buy, but at least recommended. If you want to if you want to get this set, this is a good set. If you don't want to get this set, then you don't need to get this set. Um, but again, if you're, it, like, if you really need a Red Skull figure... That's, you know, this is a good way to... I mean, this is the only way to get him, really. Um, and I suppose from a parts basis, you get some of these nice... Uh, what are they called? Sand green pieces? I don't remember. Um, yeah. It's... Uh, but again, it's not a bad set. It's just a little disappointing. It feels like it could have been more... But then again, if they'd made it more, it would have cost more. And I'm sure that Lego, from the beginning, was saying, look, this is a $20 set. We really can't do much with it. Let's see what we can do. And for what they could do with that kind of a price range, this is a really nice set. Again, it's well built. It has some great play value. You know, still got the flick fire missiles, though. They seem to... Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, get over here. Uh. Um, bump the camera. Again. Need to figure out a better way of mounting this thing. Um, you know, it's got great play value. Um, you know, the flick fire missiles and stuff like that for battling Captain America. Though it could not, it probably would not have cost them too much to at least give us one stud launcher for the Red Skull, at least. If not two, one for each of them. Um, yeah, I think that, I honestly think that those are my only, my own, those are, that's really my only complaint about this set, for what it is. Um, for what this set is, if it had had a stud launcher... <coughs> excuse me. If it had had one of the little handheld stud launchers for the Red Skull, I think this would have been a much better set. And that, for its price range, if LEGO had been willing to, say, make this a $25 set or a $30 set, 
um, then I would hope that they would have some sort of enclosure for the two members of Hydra here. But then again, uh, they just might not have wanted to do that and wanted a simple $20 set. Um, I will say that compared to a couple of other of the, uh, the cheaper superhero sets I've known, specifically the ones from Iron Man 3 two years ago, like, um, the one where he battles the Mandarin and the, uh, the harbor fight with War Machine and stuff, this is far better than those sets. Oh, wow, those sets are so disappointing. And the thing is, they are still around at my local Toys R Us. I might just pick those sets up again in the future just to talk about them, really, um, and how disappointing they are as sets, to be perfectly honest. Uh, God. Okay, I'm going to propose a drinking game for my next video. Um, how about you take a shot of something every time I say, to be perfectly honest, um, you'll probably be dead of alcohol poisoning, alcohol poisoning, alcohol poisoning by the end of the video. And this video is now like 25, 26 minutes long. Um, and that was my phone. Fortunately on silent this time, but also on vibrate. So you might've been able to hear the little buzz. Uh, so yeah, again, so in short, this is not a must buy set. But it is a good set. Um, recommended for anyone who's a fan of Captain America, because, again, $20 gets you a newer Captain America figure uh, and the Red Skull. The Red Skull really is kind of the selling point for me on this set. The vehicle he comes in is really nice uh, for what it is. Um, and the little Hydra goon's kind of fun, though. Again, he feels like he's in the wrong color or that he's missing an accessory. Um, yeah, so... Um, not bad. I'm going to give this set, uh, I'll say this is a three and a half out of five if I was going to, uh, give sets points, which fortunately I'm not. Um, yeah, as for what I think I'm going to do with this set, um, I don't have much demand for, uh, any of the pieces in the set for my own personal builds. I'm thinking that this might get a minor rebuild, retool of sorts, that we can get, like, a covered area for at least the pilot of this thing, and maybe a slightly redesigned, um, turret, so that we can get, like, a proper, um, Tesseract ray gun esque cannon coming off of the front. Uh, I'll have to see. I've got a couple of other little build projects I'm working on. So anyway, that is... Damn it, what's this set called? Captain America vs. Hydra. Um, not a must-buy, but a good set nonetheless. So, uh, there we go. Pew! Oh, now you fly somewhere far. Hail Hydra!